um, so we see here, um, so God is, uh, the Lord is, uh, you know, the, the verse before that uh, talks about ministering, you know, being hospitable. Uh, we're looking at uh, 1 Peter 4 and um, verse 11. So the verse before that talks about being hospital, hospitable to one another without grumbling and ministering the gift to one another. Uh, so it talks about, you know, whatever God has put in our heart to, to really share yeah. that, to steward that well. Okay, and in the same, um, same, vain um, Peter says if anyone speaks if anyone speaks um, or communicates or proclaims you know we can say whatever let them speak as the oracles of God right so we've seen this before that let him speak as an oracle of God in the sense what is in the heart of God let him be a mouth piece for God, a spokespiece, spokesperson for God um, so which means that um, which uh, requires for us to to really seek God. You know, it, it requires for us to really seek Him and pursue Him and know what's in His heart. Right. So it's uh, we know that it cannot be a casual seeking. Um, it cannot be a very superficial, um, you know, kind of relationship. Right. So um, while we journey through time, you know, uh, in the sense. Uh, which is a fancy way of saying that while we spend, you know, as we go on in ministry, as we continue to uh, minister and in through the years, you know, it is possible that that we come to a place of okay, uh, you know, there's something happening, and so I minister. You know, there's an event and then I minister. You know, there's uh, there's a Sunday service and I you know minister. Um, and I need to do it. Uh, let me do it, right? Uh, but here we see that. If I need to minister, uh, Peter's exhortation is that you minister as the oracles of God. You minister uh, as a spokesperson for God. You know, minister. Let him speak with the ability which God provides. Right. So, which means that I need to seek Him. I need to pursue Him. I need to receive from Him, and uh, you know, receive what's in His heart, and the ability. You know, the power aspect of it, the anointing aspect of it. So that also, you know, I seek him, I pursue, and, uh, you know, I receive from him, and I minister with the ability that he gives, right? And the end result of this is that God will be glorified. Okay, so we are called to this, and, um, you know, maybe never get jaded, maybe never get um, complacent in this area, but let us uh, minister as the oracles of God. Okay. And there is nothing more satisfying, exhilarating, exciting, uh, as we when we do this, right? Okay, so let's pray and let's say, God, you know, I want to be this, right? I want to be your spokesperson. I want to speak as the oracle of God. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you called us to this, invited us to this, and it's a, it's a privilege for us, Lord, to speak, um, Lord. Uh, as if you would speak in that place, God, to minister, God, as you would minister in that place, Father God. And so uh, we thank you that you've called us to this, to to, to speak as the oracles of God. And uh, Master, to this end, we, we commit ourselves, Lord, uh, into your mighty hands, God, to do what it takes, Father God, in the natural, God, to do what it takes, oh God, in the spiritual, oh Master, that we might uh, speak. Lord, minister with the ability that you have given us, God. Um, yeah, your ability, God, is um, limitless, Lord, and uh, it's far beyond, Lord, what we can even imagine. And Master, we ask, oh God, for an impartation, Lord, of that ability in us, Lord. And I just pray today for those of us who are, uh, all of us here in this class, and uh, I just pray for each one of us, oh God, that utterance will be given, oh God, that we, each one of us, oh God, will be ministering as the oracles of God. Lord, that we would seek to know you, God, that we would pursue you, God, with all our hearts and mind and soul and strength, oh Father God. And um, Lord, seek to know what's in your heart, oh Father God, and uh, even as you reveal Reveal these to us, Father God, by your spirit. Uh, may we be careful to treasure these, Lord. May we be careful to esteem these, Father God. And um, yeah, may we be careful to steward, oh God, uh, these things, oh Father God, revelation and truth and everything, God, uh, uh, in the best way possible, Father God. Yes, Master, you, we thank you that um, you will do this in our lives. And we commit ourselves, Lord, to journey with you, Father God, to walk with you, to see this, Lord, um, Lord, uh, work out in our lives each and every time we minister, God. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen.
Okay. So um, last class, you know, we've been looking at some of the keys to effective preaching. Right? And so we've been looking at some of the practical things. Um, and um, so we we saw you know, how humor will help. Humor will actually help us in uh, various ways. It will help us to bridge some um, you know, difficult things. It will help us to bridge all those uh, you know, gaps. And, uh, and also difficult content, you know, it will help it will put the audience at ease right and uh, um, uh, to help them to re relax uh, especially when you know uh, some difficult things some convicting things some hard things have been communicated right? it it helps to do that as well the smart humor does that as well so we saw that uh, the word of caution was that that uh, let humor be in you know like a spice and not the main thing Okay, otherwise there's no well there's no seriousness and whatever truth we declare also seems to be watered down right people uh, if it's something very uh, something of a significant nature something that is serious then it's not received in that uh, with that seriousness right okay so use it uh, uh, you know be discerning in in the use of humor okay um, the next thing we saw was that we need to plan on a good level of content per minute uh, so, in other words, we're saying that you plan out your uh, the message in such a way that there is time for each and every section. There is time for each and every point. Okay. So, um, uh, some of these things which uh, which hinder us from actually delivering in the right way uh, or completing even the message is when we are repetitive. Okay. When we repeat things over and over again. Right. So some some things we say over and over again. Repetition is good to some extent, right? Um, how does it help? It helps uh, in memory. It helps to uh, uh, highlight the importance of things, right? So repetition helps in, the, in those ways. It helps people to retain, fine. But then if you are going to repeat it for the sake of you know repeating, then it's going to fill up. It's going to take time. It's going to steal time. Right. So be careful of repetition. Be careful of um, uh, losing the, the audience uh, attention of the audience. Be careful of that because repetition tends to do that. And people also would feel, you know, why is this person saying this over and over again? You know, I've got it. I've already got it, and it, it might come as a very patronizing thing. You know, like uh, okay, as you would talk to a child. And, uh, over and over and over again, and instructing a child over, and so they they might feel it's very very patronizing. They might feel as you know condescending manner. Right? So to avoid all that, you know, you you think of it. Okay, have I said it too many times? Let me just stop here, move on. Okay, and plan different sections. Uh, how much time can I give this? How much time can I give the other thing? Uh, well, this is. Um, Certainly, uh, a, 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 a difficult concept, or maybe something that is new, uh, something that requires a bit of explaining. So I'm going to spend so much time. And some things are simple. Some things need not be, you know, explained. Just mention, keep going. Okay. Um, when it comes to uh, again uh, delivering content and planning your time well. Um, we need to be thoroughly prepared. You know that goes without saying. Right? We need to know the content. You know we can't be not prepared certain things, and we can't postpone certain things. And okay, I'll do it later. I'll do it later, and then suddenly realize, oh, I didn't even, you know, I didn't even go through this. I, I didn't even, you know, prepare this well. I, I should have read this. I should have, you know, all these things come, and then you get getting all tensed up, right, anxious. So prepare thoroughly, so that you can be relaxed. But also, uh, preparing thoroughly also uh, uh, leaves us or gives us the freedom to uh, to make some spontaneous, uh, you know, take some spontaneous route. Okay. So since you know the content and you prepared it well, it also you know, enables you to uh, speak certain things. Maybe not there in the outline, but you sense the Lord speaking these things, and it gives you that freedom to do that as well. Okay. Okay. Um, then some practical things about notes. Um, well, if you're going to write down word for word, okay, um, 
what would happen is that you normally, you know, um, you would feel tempted to glance at the notes over and over again, right? So if you've written down, okay, um, like maybe initially we can write down, okay, hello, how are you? <laughs> you know, everything word for word. Apparently, um, like uh, in some in some scenarios it would work. You know, I've I've read that uh, Joel Osteen, you know, in in his uh, early days of um, the TV ministry, like after he, he took over from his father, um, he used he used to write down each and everything, right? Because it was television, and it was very time bound. He had to uh, you know convey certain things within those whatever three minutes, four minutes, whatever be the time frame, right? It was it was short, and uh, and so he, he he actually wrote down word for word, you know, line for line, what is it that he needed to convey so that uh, he can actually do that he knows that okay he can time it he can say it and uh, it can be conveyed in that manner well uh, that would happen in certain contexts right um but uh, that doesn't have to be so all the time right uh, especially when it's uh, let's say you know you call to speak somewhere and you have sufficient time like say 30 minutes 40 minutes whatever and uh, so if you have a verbatim sermon outline uh, the temptation is to just be locked into that right um, and uh, you don't want to take your eyes off that so instead of communicating with the audience you know you are constantly looking into the notes and you're reading out and it's good content uh, and you're you know you've prepared well but having that kind of a notes really you know, if you if you're not careful, you'll be locked into it. You know, you need to make a you need to make a conscious choice not to do that. Say, okay, these are some things I understood it, or I've uh, you know prepared this. I've written this down, and um, yeah, so so that I can prepare it well. Uh, these are some things that I need to speak. Um, these are some points, but I'm going to now communicate that with the audience. I'm going to speak that now. I'm going to preach that now. Um, I'm going. To, I'm not going to be looking into my notes all the time. Okay. I'm going to glance at it when I'm done with this point. I'm going to look at the other point. So I know this is the flow of things that I want to communicate. I don't want to miss out on anything. Right. So uh, so that's uh, those are some things that we need to do um, so that we don't get locked into a uh, content or locked into the uh, you know, what we have written down as the sermon notes. Okay, and some um, um, uh, sometimes you know people say twenty minutes is what right now you know people say that twenty minutes is what people can actually give attention. Twenty minutes. Now that's a short span, which means that every twenty minutes, if you are going to be speaking for let's say one hour, okay, so every twenty minutes there needs to be a shift. There needs to be a transition. Okay, so people can. If they are going to give attention only for 20 minutes, then we need to have some kind of a shift and transition, uh, and so that people can attend. I mean, be attentive. Okay, um, and like uh, you know, in the notes there is this quote: "The mind can only absorb what the seat can endure." In the sense, physically, you know, if a person can is comfortable, uh, you know, let's say 20 minutes, 30 minutes, that's it. Otherwise, you know, they start. Uh, shifting fidgeting and now you know what we've noticed is with social media with you know all these uh, instagram and everything the that has come down even now you know the attention span is so reduced um like i i remember you know sharing a video with my daughter and and i asked her okay um they shared that i think it was fairly i don't know it was just maybe 10 minutes long and uh, and she was done so, you know, I think within two, three minutes she was done. So I asked her, you know, how did you finish it? And I, she said, I just forwarded. I just forwarded it to wherever it was, and then and that's it, done. So people are very, very, you know, uh, impatient. They just want to, you know, get to the end, finish it. Um, so we are living in such a time, you know, and we're we are addressing such audiences, you know, with, with such such um, short span. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that everyone is like that. But uh, we have such folks in the audience, and more and more, you know, as more and more people start using these media, you know, things they will be 
they will be the tendency is to scroll up <laughs> you know scroll to the next one scroll scroll to the next story right skip to the next part so um, so mindful of be mindful of that um, and uh, so when you speak you know people might be there physically but they are they there emotionally and you know mentally right uh, ask yourself that okay um the next one the next key to effective preaching is a voice okay is my voice loud enough okay is my voice comfortably loud right? it, should, it should not be painfully loud right if it's painfully loud especially with the pa and everything if i'm going to be shouting you know screaming um i know that you know uh that is uh uh, a style or a, a you know a characteristic way of preaching you know in some cultures um, uh, which is accepted norm in some in in some cultures as well so which is is okay but it should it, it people cannot endure that for a long time right so it has to be okay maybe certain things you are proclaiming preaching you are you know emphasizing go ahead do it but then be mindful of the fact that people cannot endure that. If you're going to be uncomfortably loud all the time, um, people are going to tune off. Okay, there's only so much they can take in, right? So, um, be loud enough. Com be comfortably loud so that the furthest person in the hall, the furthest person sitting in the you know in the congregation, the audience, uh, can hear comfortably. Okay, so anyway. Every audience, every every place now, you know, we have a PA, we have a mic and loudspeakers and so on, so uh, so that they can hear comfortably, loud enough, right? Uh, okay. Then the other thing is also, uh, I think, uh, what we were looking at uh, earlier, like John Paul mentioned last class, was about the rate of speech. Okay. Uh, the rate of speech is it too slow? Is it too fast? If it's too slow, people are going to again nod off, sleep sometimes, uh, you know, doze off. Um, and also lose track, right? Um, but if it's going to be very fast, then again, the same thing happens. Right? They're not able to grasp, what did he say that? Oh, he's already moved on. You know, what, what, are they, what is he saying next? Uh, it's already moved on to the thing. So it's very fast. And also, if it is going to be too rapid and fast, the words that we use, the sentences that we use are not going to be clear. Right? So, um, well, the rate of speech um, and also the clarity of the words uh, and also the the tone okay so that that's another important thing i think i mentioned right uh, one example where um, i i preached a message on a sunday and then uh, after soon after that this person came and said that gave a feedback you know you, you the content was good you know i really enjoyed the message the content was good pastor but then your tone is very very monotone monotonous right it's, uh, it's the same tone right throughout so there's no up or down no variation so he was actually at that time i think he was teaching some soft skills and all that so he said uh, you know i find that very very uh, very boring the tone and also i find that uh, i'm not able to you know i, I sometimes doze off and he was brave brave enough and bold enough to you know just uh, say that i need to tell the pastor this i need to tell him that um and uh, and and thank god he did that right so i could at least you know i even though when i have a tendency to go into a monotone every time i'm reminded of that and say okay is there variation in my voice right is, does it go up and does it come down uh, where it needs to Right where it needs to, so that it doesn't sound artificial, but at the same time, wherever, wherever there's an emphasis, am I, you know, changing the tone? Am I changing the pitch? Am I, uh, you know, uh, 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 what is my volume, and what is my speed, the speed at which I speak, right? all that. Okay, so something about language is uh, uh, use words that are clear, right? Use words that are simple which uh, communicate the message um, emphasize certain words if need be and when we are speaking uh, we can use repetition right to emphasize certain things we can use a pause right so you're making a statement saying that um, because well, i'm just reading it you are 
a chosen generation. You are a chosen generation. So there's a pause after you are chosen generation. So we could say it without a pause and okay, you are a chosen generation. You are a chosen generation. But what is the difference when you add the pause? Anyone, when you say, okay, let's say the first example, you are a chosen generation. You are a chosen generation. So what's the difference? Sorry? Yeah. It's, clearer. it's clearer. Okay. Um, okay. So Jeffina says it's clearer. Anyone else? Anyone else? What is the difference? Um, it gives the audience to think on that word. It uh, chosen generation. Right. Yeah. So it, it kind of emphasizes those words, and uh, the audience gets to think about that. Okay, you are, and then it's like, okay, I am uh, a chosen. You know, and you think on that word. Okay, chosen and generation, and you're thinking about these words. These words kind of stand out. Like, it's like um, you have a highlighter in the notes, and then you you highlight, you know, or you highlight a verse in the Bible, you underline something. It's like that, right? So you you're highlighting it, you're focusing on that, and and it changes the 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 whole you know uh, communication of that thought, right? So you are a chosen generation. There's emphasis, there's clarity, there's also focus, right? So this word, so. So it kind of um, it it you know this is a small thing it's a practical thing but it goes a long way in communication of the truth right so so we, we might think oh am I just manipulating things right uh, well it's a fine line okay if I'm using these abilities if I'm using these practical things it's a fine line you know if your motive if your heart is is clear. Right. If your motive is okay, I need to communicate this, this message, the meaning in this, the thought in this, in the best way possible. Okay. Now it's not like I I want them to think in a certain way or I want them to behave in a certain way. Uh, you know, uh, I want them to do this, and because of that, I'm just going to put in all this emotion and do it. No, the truth itself causes you, you know, to, for all these emotions to come out. And you're just not holding back. You're just, you know, communicating that, right? So you yourself, as a as a person, as a messenger, right? And and carrying that message, right? Your and it's it's uh, your personality, your uh, your emotions, and everything are you know, intertwined with that, okay? Which is fine, okay? So um, so the thing is this: uh, uh, are we emphasizing? You know, are we emphasizing the words? Are we, um, uh, and also, you know, we're going to look at the next one, which is uh, what about gestures, right? What about gestures? You know, I think in in our um, in person class, uh, one of these years, we, uh, you know, the previous years, we did this exercise. Okay, like we just grouped up into two by two, and um, each person had to speak to the other person, and without using any hand gestures. No hand gestures, no face gestures, but they had to talk for some time. Okay? They had to talk about something that they were very interested in, something that, you know, <laughs> so uh, their favorite dish or something like that. And they had to talk about that and they had to, you know, emote that, uh, but without using face gestures, without using, uh, you know, uh, hand gestures, they had to do that. It was very difficult. Right. Very difficult to do it, so it comes naturally for us right, to to any kind of gestures. But the thing is this: you know, when you're in front of an audience, uh, you kind of feel inhibited. You want to put your hand out and you want to lift your hands, maybe, but then you're you're feeling inhibited. Or you you know, it's like, oh, I'm I'm in front of this large group, um, so sometimes right, we feel inhibited and you don't want to do all that. Okay, so the thing is, you know, these gestures also help. These gestures also help communicate in a powerful way to 
to preach in an effective manner okay so uh, so that, uh, that doesn't mean that you're doing some you know um, what do you call it? you're doing some over the top gestures or you're just you know uh, doing some gesture or gesturing uh, excessively now that can be a um, that can be a, a you know a point where it, it, people are not able there can be a distraction and people are not able to concentrate and so so with that let's let's look at uh, you know some gestures okay and posture okay um and see what what is it that's really required uh, one thing is this that if we if, if we hunch over or slump or you know maybe there's a podium and then you just you know leaning over the podium then it it doesn't really convey um, that you're serious about something that, that we are you know going to speak about whatever we message we have it doesn't convey that okay so it comes across as too relaxed right uh, and not really uh, something uh, not, not really something that exudes um, you know that this is a serious thing this is something that um, that i'd like you to listen right that, that as a congregation that we'd like you to take notice of and it's it's overtly relaxed and uh, and it's like taking things for granted right so uh, our gestures our body language should be uh, something that actually translates or communicates confidence right uh, and it's something that enhances whatever we are saying it should go hand in hand right? uh, our gestures can enhance like they say that the bigger the audience you know let's say you're speaking to thousands of people let's say there are 2000 people the bigger the audience you naturally need to have some big gestures right um with the smaller the audience you don't like if it's like say 2000 people and um, and you're speaking to them you know, it's like if you want to say something you can throw your hands out you know welcome everyone you know it makes a big impact right the big audience big congregation how are, how's everyone doing but if it's if it's uh, you know two people or three people uh, you know sitting and then you're doing that it comes as something that is excessive right so um use gestures that are appro appropriate for the size of the congregation and for the for the nature of content as well right um so these are some practical things um also be careful that you're not doing anything that is distracting Okay, so suppose I I keep fidgeting with my button, okay, or I keep um, you know let's say I have a pen here and I keep removing it, putting it, or if if I just put my hands in my pocket and I do something with it, if I'm fidgeting, um, then it becomes something that people are noticing. They are not uh, paying attention to. You know, we, I'm sure all of us did that, right? Um, in college or school, we noted down you know that that teacher who was fidgeting, that teacher who would say repeat certain things. And and I, I know my my daughter did that, you know, in a, in a in a notebook she'd write down. Okay, this teacher said this so many times in this class. Okay, she said this so many times. She uh, did this gesture so many times. People start doing that instead of actually taking notes, instead of actually you know paying attention to the content. So, um, so then you don't want that, right? So fidgeting, maybe some kind of a mannerism, maybe somebody can give feedback. Okay, or maybe you can just record yourself. You know, put your phone somewhere there and just record it and use that as something to reflect upon and also something to change. You know, some you can always uh, it will be very very um, very useful, right? Very useful. Sometimes when I uh, we don't realize it because because in our minds we think that okay we are doing everything okay we are thinking about the content we are thinking about uh, especially when it comes to you know recording something. Uh, we think that okay everything is fine but then you you hear yourself and you realize oh there are so many things i i wish i, I you know i i didn't do that or there's so much of uh, mannerisms that are part of me that i didn't notice right so um so do that right uh, why are we looking at all this big picture right it is so that we can communicate effectively because the message of the content is is worth communicating effectively
and the truth that we are call of it's a it's a privilege for us to communicate it's worth communicating effectively so uh, we're looking at it in the uh, in in the correct context okay it's not to make us look great it's not to call attention to ourselves it is not to make us feel special or in any way okay so so let's look at it in the right way right context the reason we are looking at it we are studying this and we want to put it in practice is because we want to communicate effectively and we are communicating a, a message that is worth communicating effectively right uh, that is worth you know causing all distractions uh, to cease right okay okay so what about facial expressions you know for some of us are we're naturally very expressive naturally you know, uh, we frown, we we smile, we uh, you know, some of us are like that. But some of us, it's it's a deadpan expression, right? We don't emote too much, even in our you know, usual conversation. Uh, like, I, I know I've spoken to some people who are like so serious throughout, and so you're wondering, did I say anything wrong? <laughs> you know, because they're not used to you know smiling or you know they're very serious. Even when they say something funny, you know, they're just so serious, and you're wondering, like, you know, so, so I understand that, like, right? oh, sometimes it's cultural, you know. I, I remember once um, speaking to a congregation, and um, and this congregation, uh, you know, I found it difficult because every time I look at someone, um, and you know, eye contact, they would look away, right. So I, I look at someone and I'm saying, uh, because I want a response, right? So you you want want to realize, you want, you want to kind of observe and see, is it making sense? You know, are people interested? Uh, or, um, you know, are they finding it difficult to understand? So you're looking at people, you know, are they nodding? Are they, so every time I look at people, they would turn away. So their expression, they so no eye contact. Right, so uh, so I'm wondering, you know, what is happening every time, and I, then I realize, okay, culturally, they, if if you need, if you're looking at them, you know, eye to eye, that means that, you know, if a, looking at a person of authority eye to eye, that means that you're, you know, you're kind of rebelling, you're not showing respect. And so if it's a person of authority, they would not normally they lower the eye. You know, it's an act of humility, lowering the eye and, you know, talking. But I was, I found it very difficult, right? So maybe, you know, this kind of a gesture, you know, maybe if, if you're from that kind of a culture and then you're not looking into the eyes of the person to whom you're speaking and you're, you know, maybe lowering your eyes, you're not contacting, you know, you are not making eye contact, then it's, it's not really you know, good communication, right? So, uh, you know, so, so I understand, okay, maybe some cultures, we're not really expressive, Maybe we don't meet. I we don't make eye contact, right? All that, but um, put all that aside, right? When it comes to this, when it, because it's a message worth communicating. It's a message uh, where all hindrances are, are taken, especially when you're ministering, you know, multiculturally, and you're coming from that culture, but you're ministering to another culture, and you need to be mindful of that, right? Okay, so um, okay, some practical things, you know, like. Uh, if you feel that something is hindering, okay, if you feel that, okay, there's a table, there is a chair, something, you know, physical environment, which, which is not really allowing you free access to the, um, to the congregation, you know, probably you can request that to be moved, you know, maybe it's a podium and you don't want it right in front, but you want it on the side, you feel that, you can do that. Uh, another thing is to actually move away. You know, you we keep our notes or Bible and phones and everything on the podium, and we move away and speak to the congregation. So it's not as if we are hiding behind a podium or you know uh, allowing that to. Uh, so what happens is when we are moving away, we are actually saying that okay, uh, I'm open, uh, I'm accessible, and uh, and I, I'm, I'm sharing this. I've got nothing to hide. You know, it, it all comes through when we do that. Okay, um, so we can we can learn from this. Um, we can always, uh, you know, um, kind of um, uh, progressively improve in this area. Uh, we can do that. Right. Um, also, uh, I think uh, when it comes to gestures, when it comes to body language, we can also 
think about clothing, right? Uh, appropriately dressed for the occasion. Um, well, if it is going to be, um, just get to know, okay, what kind of dress code is appropriate, right, as a speaker? Um, well, if it's a suit and tie kind of thing, go formally dressed, okay? If it is a informal thing where people are, people don't mind, people come in, you know, jeans and t-shirt, or um, then you go appropriately, appropriately dressed because showing up in a, you know, suit and tie and that kind of an audience, uh, would be uh, may not be appropriate, right? So I, I remember once um, we had a guest speaker uh, and church, and um, so he came dressed up in suit and tie, right? So and he was telling me, and in church, uh, we don't normally do that. Right? Everybody's casual. There's some guys walking in shorts, and so all that. So he was feeling very overdressed, and then he was telling me, uh, "Thank God, you know, God's sense of humor." Praise God, that day was graduation Sunday. So, and all the students were in their graduation gowns and, you know, caps. Then he said, oh, praise God, I was really saved by this. Otherwise, I would have stuck out as one, you know, as a sotam, as someone who was uh, overly dressed. But praise God for this, at least. You know, now I can take off my jacket and, you know, just, I'll be okay. So, um so that you know just to find out what is appropriate and um, yeah so okay jeffina uh, oh this is uh, earlier okay okay yeah, yeah sure uh, okay i just noticed this sorry okay okay the, then the next thing is um okay this is um, quite useful and i think it's very important for those of us who are probably starting off um you know you just um, you're you're a beginner to public speaking. You're a beginner to ministering and and publicly uh, in gatherings. Don't disqualify yourself. Okay, maybe it's your first time, or maybe it's your fifth time. Don't disqualify yourself. You know what do we mean by that? You know, many of us we we some of us have this tendency to say, okay, um, you know, I'm not a great speaker, and I'm not a orator, uh, but I'm just a so and so, and I've come to share. Okay. You don't need to do that, right? Or you might say, okay, this is my first time, so I please kindly, um, you know, excuse me. I apologize for any uh, whatever errors or things like that. You know, I'm not an expert on this subject, and we don't need to do that, right? Because um, we are actually, uh, you know, lessening our impact on the on the congregation, and also we are reducing our own. Uh, confidence level. You know, imagine you're just going and there and then saying this, and then you you have a very important message. Uh, you know, a message that really is impactful. It's it's a, it's a God-given word, and just imagine the impact of that, right? So so you don't need to do that. Avoid all these things, right? Uh, and and just go with confidence and uh, share whatever needs to be shared, right? Don't discount yourself, okay? Um, so th those are some ways by which we discount ourselves. We we talk about our lack of uh, experience. We talk about our lack of uh, maturity. We talk, talk about our lack of expertise in an area, lack of knowledge in something. And um, we don't need to do that. The audience also is not really interested in knowing all that, right? You can just go ahead and share what needs to be shared. Uh, and with God-given confidence, and uh, knowing fully well that He is communicating to the, you know, the Holy Spirit is confirming the truth that you've spoken, you're declaring, He's confirming it. And so there's no need to apologize for some things. Just go ahead and do it uh, in, in confidence, right? Uh, with, with God's confidence. Um, knowing that you're a spokesperson, you know, that verse that we see, that we read just now, you know, before we started, that you're ministering as the oracles of God, oracle of God. So you're speaking, you're there on his behalf, and you're there as a spokesperson for the kingdom of God, for the king of the kingdom, right? So do that with all boldness. We're not saying be arrogant, <laughs> you know, looking down, condescending manner. Sometimes that's the other extreme. Okay, all of you just sit up and listen. All I have to say, we have a very important message now. You better listen. Right. Um, and, you know, kind of bossing around and um, 
it happens in certain rural settings i've seen it right so people are so they just treating them like children these are adults and you're bossing over them don't do that right um, remember that you are it's a privilege to be the shepherd of the sheep and uh, you know first peter chapter 5 this is what it says shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but uh, eagerly, not as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Okay, First Peter chapter 5, verse 2. So have that, uh, you know, art, have that heart when we minister. Okay, right. And it's good for us to include ourselves. Okay, so what we are looking at, um, uh, you know, not disqualifying ourselves, uh, and also we're looking at the other end of the spectrum, which is the uh, other end of that uh, particular thing, line of thinking, which is where you know we we fault on err on the other side, where we are too authoritative and too uh, aggressive and uh, arrogant. Sometimes we come across as arrogance. Now, don't err on that side also, right? But include yourself. Right. Include yourself. So what do we mean by that? Um, you know, the message that you're sharing, you know, are we using words like, you know, we, let us, uh, let us give up, or let us move here, let us do this, or is it only you need to do, you need to do that, you better you know, you better, uh, you know, give up these things, right? Well, I know that there is a place for that. You know, God is saying, you need to do this. Like, maybe it's a message for, you know, it's a message for that congregation. It's a prophetic, let's say, a prophetic word. Uh, it Maybe it's a prophetic rebuke, right? So there's a place for that. But we can speak the truth in love. Right? We can speak the truth gracefully, in a gracious manner. Right? So be mindful of that, okay? And include ourselves. Let's include ourselves in the message instead of saying, "I, I want you all to do this." You know, let us do this. Why don't we lift our voices and give a shout of praise? You know, why don't we do this? Why don't we lift our hands? You know, uh, so include yourself. Okay, don't exclude yourself and say. Okay, us and them kind of a mentality. You know, me and you, include yourself. You're a fellow believer. You're a fellow, you know, um, um, you know, learner together. Fellow disciple. Um, so do that. Communicate that. Okay. Um, so without putting yourself down, right? Uh, you're saying that I am learning along with you. I, I have this message, and I'm boldly sharing that with you. Okay. So we, us very important right and there are places where we need to use you you need to do this you need to do this uh, or you you should not do this use it but just make sure that it's appropriate right okay um again be sensitive when it comes to um you know uh, people in the audience who are uh, maybe of not of the same worldview as yours. You know, not they are not Christians. They are not believers. And uh, you know this, uh, like I shared, you know, we were doing this series on faith and science, and uh, uh, I realized that um, you know I should not mock people of um, you know if they're going to be believing in these things. You know, it seems ridiculous. It seems illogical to believe in certain things. Um, you know, to not believe in uh, Creator God, to not believe in you know somebody with uh, so much of intelligence and design, um, it seems very illogical. But I should not end up mocking. You know, we should not end up mocking, putting down that person. Right. Uh, uh, so yes, the truth is that maybe the person is worshiping something or considering something, esteeming something, which is not the truth. You know? But don't uh, put down that person. Right? Um, so, yeah, speak the truth. Speak the truth in love. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Any any um, any doubts or anything that you might want to add or any practical 
um, let's say challenges uh, that you have you know faced um, that you might want to share when it comes to preaching when it comes to you know presenting something um yeah personally i think uh, for me the challenge was i used to repeat you know these things these words like um, i used to say you know uh, that was one phase of my life i used to say you know this you know that you know and uh, you know that that became a kind of a, a behave pra practice and uh, a stubborn habit which, which uh, i had to drop intentionally and also um yeah some things like that you know so um, so get some feedback uh, don't be close to feedback so people can sometimes it comes in a very harsh manner you know, it comes in a very uh, you know it, it comes from a place of criticism sometimes harsh criticism not constructive criticism but it's okay if there's some uh, you know uh, some truth to it receive that it's it's always great to receive that okay okay so i guess we'll stop here and then we'll continue with um, uh, certain other things that will help us to be effective um also i think we will we'll just pick up from where we left off uh, when it came to some spontaneous preaching so i think we had uh, john paul we had uh, Okay, so question in chat. Okay, what about when a pastor gives an example of somebody or about his own life, like any incident? We want to make a sermon. Is it possible the pastor making up stories? Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, I think if um, if a person makes up something, um, see, you can do this. You know, um, you you can say it like this. You know, let's say there was there's a person named John, and you're just talking about an imaginary thing. That's fine. No, but but if you're let's say if John goes there and does this, so everybody knows that it's a hypothetical thing, right? But if you're saying, okay, I met this guy called John, I know about this John who did this, and that's completely false, um, then you're not being authentic, then you're not being truthful. Like it's okay to talk about uh, like even this Sunday I shared about you know again John <laughs> uh, about little John who was very 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 hyperactive and who was running around in school and the teacher pulled him and made him sit down. it's a completely hypothetical thing you know, made him sit down and said John sit down and John sat down but then John said teacher I'm sitting on the outside but on the inside I'm still standing and running around <laughs> and that was a completely hypothetical thing but everybody knew that right uh, so i'm not saying you know i met this boy called john so that would be that would be untrue and that would be uh, inauthentic we should avoid that yeah uh, is that okay rosalind any other questions fine um, right okay so we'll stop here and then we'll continue next class. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.